Liv Schmidt, the controversial skinny influencer, has been banned from TikTok, and I'm here to talk about it. Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Whitney Holcomb, and I am author of the book, One Year, 100 Pounds. For those of you who are new to my channel, I lost 100 pounds on my own when I was 14 years old, and I've kept it off for almost exactly 20 years now. My book is about my weight loss journey, and it's about how I did it, and it's also a tough love for how you can do it and change your life also. My weight loss was such a transformational part of my life. It really changed the course of my life forever. I got healthier, became confident, and really learned the true power within myself to change my life, change my circumstances, and go after the life of my dreams. I was the bullied fat girl who had no friends and really didn't, you know, no one expected much of whatsoever. Um, into losing 100 pounds, becoming a model, living in New York City, kind of doing all the things that I always dreamed about doing. So anyways, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in reading, then you can check it out on Amazon and Barnes & Noble, and I will leave the link below to my book. For those of you who have been following me, you know that I'm not part of the fat acceptance movement or health at every size movement because it's just factually not true. Being overweight, being obese is not healthy for you, and it will catch up to you one day. That being said, I think the body positivity movement can be great. It started with great intentions. Yes, you do not need to be super skinny or look like a model to be healthy and attractive. Um, unfortunately, though, I feel like the body positivity movement has gone too far these days. I think it kind of meshes in with the fat acceptance or the health at every size movement. And I think it almost overcorrected itself from, I guess, like the toxic diet culture of the early 2000s to the point where now it's almost like they shame women for being skinny or for wanting to be skinny, which is why we're talking about Liv Schmidt today. So I did a video on her not too long ago, actually. Um, I had recently discovered her on TikTok and I had discovered her from TikToks other people were making about her. And the TikToks were awful. I mean, they were videos of like, you know, people eating a donut or eating a burrito and then saying, oh, you know, eating this burrito because people like Liv Schmidt exist. Um, so really, you know, really hateful stuff towards her. Um, and again, I didn't know who she was. So I figured, oh God, she must be really bad. She must be someone who's really toxic. You know, I was thinking maybe she's like another Eugenia Cooney kind of thing. Um, so finally I decided to look her up. I was just curious. And first thing I noticed obviously was she was, I mean, she was very, she was very thin, but not unhealthily. So I don't think so. Um, just very beautiful, like model, like, right. She's a young 20 something living in New York. Um, definitely like the beauty standard. And then I looked at her, you know, supposedly toxic content and she shared a lot of what I eat in a day. So apparently I guess she must've been like a little bit heavier before and then she had recently lost some weight. So she shares, you know, what her meals were like, how she stays slim now. And I guess her whole thing is like what I eat in a day to stay skinny, working a nine to five, um, you know, stuff like that. So I, I looked at like what she was actually eating. And again, I was expecting like, okay, is it like a cube of cheese and a Diet Coke? Um, and I was really kind of surprised and confused because a lot of the stuff that she was eating, I mean, it actually seemed pretty balanced and pretty healthy. Uh, like she, you know, will eat like a, a protein smoothie in the morning uh, with some electrolytes. Then during the day, she kind of has a light lunch and snacks on some things. And then at night, you know, cause it's typical in New York city. I know that lifestyle. She would go out to eat with her friends or whatever. And she would get things that were not low calorie. I mean, she would, you know, be getting like truffle, truffle fries and burgers and desserts and drinking wine, um, but she just really portioned out her meals. Uh, and looking at her total calories, again, I am someone who is very aware of calories. I, you know, have counted calories for myself in the past and you know, I know a lot about this stuff. Um, I mean, I can tell you right off the back that she's in most of her, you know, her what I eat in a days, she's consuming anywhere from 15 to 1800 calories a day, which for someone like her, of her size, who's very tiny, that's a pretty normal amount just for maintenance calories. So yes, she's eating very small portion sizes, but total caloric needs, I mean, she's kind of right on track. Like I, I don't see anything wrong with that. On top of that, you know, I mean, she shares her workouts and you know, she's not like a, an, an athlete by any means. I think most of her stuff is like Pilates and she does a lot of walking because she lives in New York. Um, so she's not doing like super intense workouts. Also keep in mind, 
you know, even though she is ex she is exercising more than the average person, um, which is a good thing, it's a healthy thing, your body is made to move, everyone should be exercising like her every day. Um, again, remember, when you are that tiny, you are not burning as many calories either. So again, for her caloric needs, I, I think, I mean, that's pretty right on track. Again, I don't know exactly how tall she is or exactly how much she weighs, but I can just tell. I mean, again, she's a very thin person, so it does not take as much for someone who is heavier weight. So that was my first impression of her. I was really confused. Um, I just, I didn't understand because I, I didn't think it was that bad. Um, I, I guess, and well, what I think is really more the issue here is, number one, I think she uses some language maybe that triggers people. I mean, she says things like how she likes to be skinny and she uses the word skinny a lot. And for whatever reason, that really triggers people in the body positivity um, or health at every size movement. So some of her stuff, you know, look, again, I, I don't really know this girl. I don't really follow her. I have not really followed her for very long, um, but I am not judging her based on her personality or her person. I'm just judging her based on her content as far as like, is she really giving toxic advice or not? Um, so, you know, I don't know. I have seen some stuff that is just kind of like a little bit weird for her to say. Um, however, I, I don't know if that is more so in retaliation to the hate she gets, because again, I see some stuff where it's like, like you know, she says, oh, you know, eating this, I don't know, this cucumber because obesity is a huge problem in the United States. You know, so she says things like that, which is clearly like in retaliation to what other people are saying about her. So I, you know, I suspect that is more is what trigger is triggering people. Um, I think the fact that she is just honest about her desires to want to be skinny. She fits the beauty standard and she's just telling other girls how she got skinny. And, and basically she's just saying, you know, the truth, which I have also made a video about before in my video, the myth of naturally skinny, that skinny people just don't eat as much it just is what it is they don't eat as much or they they move more um this whole thing about you know metabolism yes everyone has you know slightly different metabolisms but that is not why someone is very you know naturally skinny versus why someone is fat and overweight no they do not eat the same they do not have the same lifestyles um this is why she is skinny basically and again in my opinion i think it's you know very balanced um i mean my personal opinion is is look i the way she eats is not enough for me because I like to feel full and satiated, um, but I can eat that same amount of calories, but with a lot more food. If you eat different things, if you eat like really clean and eat like high volume, um, you know, versus high calorie. So, I mean, just for example, one of the, you know, the dinners she had, she showed herself eating a, a restaurant style hamburger, okay, which is on like a brioche bun and you know, it's cooked in all kinds of butter. It's a big pat beef patty with truffle fries and they shared a slice of like chocolate cake for dessert. I can tell you right now, that burger has close to a thousand calories and she had half. That's like 500 calories right there. Okay, even if she didn't have half, she had a quarter, 250 calories. Those truffle fries, like that, that portion she had, easily 600 calories, maybe more. And again, if she had half of that, that's 300. Okay, a slice of restaurant style, like dessert, those cakes, easily four to 500 calories for one tiny slice. You have three or four bites, you're at a couple hundred calories. So I think that is another thing too. I think that her stuff is, you know, so-called triggering to some people. Um, and I, I think that some people are maybe projecting their own problems with eating onto her in that sense, because they don't really understand calories and calorie count. Again, if you look at her stuff, yeah, it looks like she's not eating a lot. Volume wise, she's not. Calorie wise, she is. So people look at that and they think, oh my God, she's starving herself. Calorie wise, she's not. Again, like I said, that's not how I like to eat because I like to feel satisfied. But if I were to show you like what I eat in a day, like you know, 15 to 1800 calories, it would be a lot of food and no one would say anything. So that's kind of ironic part. So yeah, I suspect most of the hate really is just coming from people who I hate to say are really not happy with themselves or who maybe did have kind of a problem with eating before, probably because they were trying to be skinny and it didn't work for them. And so now they are saying, well, you know, she's a bad influence and you know, if I can't be skinny and be healthy, then neither can she. Um, that's just kind of the take I get from it. And it's funny because there are actually plenty of people on there who are saying the opposite, that like they used to be really restrictive in their eating and you know, they showed, they say that Liv Schmidt really helped show them that like, oh, you know what, I can actually eat more of what I want as long as I just, you know, portion it out. Um, and that is a big thing too. I, I think just people in general in Western society, we do not understand nutrition and we don't understand 
calories and so many people who are overweight or struggling to lose weight they say I don't get it I'm only eating like once a day I'm only eating this or that um, without understanding like you know I don't care you could be eating the healthiest foods in the world but if you're still eating too many calories you're not gonna lose weight um, same as you know you could eat once a day have one tiny meal but if it's a super high caloric meal then you will gain weight or you won't lose any but finally after all this backlash she's been banned from TikTok. Mostly, in my opinion, for just being skinny, being pretty, um, and I guess triggering some people with some of her commentary, which I think is unfair. I, I don't think that, again, anything she was doing, I, you know, at least from what I saw, I can't say I've seen every one of her posts. I don't think she was ever on there, you know, calling other people fat pigs and telling you know, other girls, you just need to starve yourself. Um, if she were doing that, you know, yeah, definitely. Um, that's just not what I saw. What I think really what it is is just a bunch of triggered women mostly um, who are not happy with themselves and I, I think you know again I think I've said before I kind of think this like whole new body positivity health every size movement is really just kind of another way to police women's bodies I mean they talk about you know accepting bodies at every size and this and that um, and that's all fine uh, unless you are skinny or want to be skinny I mean I see it all the time when like especially like women who are like maybe we're not like unhealthy overweight but they just wanted to like lean up and tone up and they lose 20 pounds and now they look more you know like I guess like the standard beauty type right they're just a lot smaller and they show their before and after pictures and you see all the women in the comments oh this is toxic oh oh it looks like you have an ED now or oh you know you look better before and it's just like I don't know it just blows my mind that it just it triggers so many people when a woman says that she wants to be skinny not for health reasons, you know, just because she thinks it makes her look better, um, which I think is totally fine. I mean, again, I think as long as you're doing it in a healthy way, if you want to lose a little bit of weight just because you want to look a little bit better because you think you look better at a smaller size, there's nothing wrong with that. Even if it is because you do want to fit into the beauty standard. Um, I mean, again, I, I feel like it's almost more socially acceptable now for women to do like the crazy surgeries and get the, the nails and the fillers and all this stuff. But God forbid a woman say she just wants to lose weight to look better. Then it's like everyone loses their mind. Um, I, I just don't really understand. Yeah, I, I think the main reason that Lipschmidt got banned is because people were jealous. Um, and I say this because, okay, if her stuff is so toxic, you know, where is the outrage for on the other spectrum, the mukbangs? Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys heard about that girl. I think she was a Chinese influencer, a Chinese mukbanger. And she, her stomach literally ruptured online. She died while she was doing a mukbang because she was eating too much. And there's another girl on there now, Jelly Bean Sweets, I think. She's probably around Liv Schmidt's age in her 20s. And you can see the difference from when she started a year ago. She's already like getting to morbidly obese. Um, I mean, she just overeats and gorges on food in every video. I, I, I mean, look, the reality is obesity is killing more people than any kind of ED, okay? Or than being skinny, I should say. So I that's just the reality it, it, that's the reality the problem in our country is not people being too skinny the problem in our country is people being too fat and we are dying from it okay there are the diseases that doctors are seeing now in young people that they used to never see until like you know like at least people in their you know 50s 60s they're now seeing in people my age even younger i just read something now that's like liver uh, liver health in children like as young as like 10 now like uh, if you guys don't know like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease it's uh you can die from cirrhosis without having having ever had a drop of alcohol um when you have too much fat accumulated around your liver and they are now seeing ele elevated liver enzymes in children in children like under 18. so if that doesn't scare you but Liv Schmidt does i mean i i just don't understand i don't understand like this is the problem, I think, with the world. And okay, like maybe Liv Schmidt is really toxic. Maybe there's some stuff on there she, she said that I didn't see. Okay, fine. But again, where is your outrage for these mukbangers? Where is your outrage for children getting diabetes at like 10 years old? Where is your outrage for people my age in their 30s and younger? I mean, getting cancer diagnosis now. I mean, again, obesity is related to cancer. Obesity is related to like, pretty much every ailment out there. It really is. Again, obesity is killing more people than people like Liv Schmidt. That's the reality. Anyhow, I just thought I would make a video on this today because I did a video on Liv Schmidt a while ago. I thought this was a good follow-up. And um, yeah, I again, I think the, like I said, the craziest part is just the irony that she's canceled, but you know, 
other people that are doing way more harm, in my opinion, for society as a whole. Um, they're still on there. Um, another thing too, I think Eugenia Cuny is, still has a platform. Uh, again, if anyone is either directly or indirectly, indirectly promoting an ED, I would say it's her, and I don't say this to like bully her. Um, I, I really feel for her, I hope she gets help. But, I mean, come on. Like, you can definitely tell the difference between Liv Schmidt and Eugenia Cooney. Anyhow guys, thank you for watching today. If you like this video and you're new here, please subscribe for more content like this. Like I said, you can also check out my book or my website where I have my blog, um, where I am not updated in a while, but I do plan to write more regular blogs, um, a lot of motivation. I, you know, I, I really love the motivation and self-development um, that goes beyond just weight loss, but you know, weight loss is kind of like my specialty. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks again for watching and I will see you guys next time.